I didn't understand a lot about what they did necessarily. I grew up around the factory, but I never saw anything. I never saw a lot of people go in. I never saw a lot of people go out. I saw pipes being moved from one side to the other, and that's all I knew. Occasionally, they would belch out a plume of steam out the top of a stack, and that was that. Well, when I toured the factory, I found myself kind of awestruck with how massive the place was, how cavernous it was. Um, at the same time, you felt like you were stepping back in time. I get the 125 years plus history. Um, I lived around it enough to understand a little bit what it stood for the community. Its impact on the world, its impact on the state, its impact on architectural buildings that have spanned a century. When I, when I looked at them in the pictures, I could tell that these were people that understood what they were creating. And they were creating something that was going to stand the test of time just like Glad McBean has for the last hundred plus years. So when I went into the factory and uh, they invited me in to come look at the pots and we were talking about opening up a gallery over here in Loomis and, and selling the garden pots, it was really apparent right away that when I went and touched them that these were more than garden pots. When we received the pots at High Hand Art Gallery, we set them up in a fashion that I actually, as I walk through the gallery, I have to walk through the gallery to get to our administrative offices. And every time I would go by, I would tap the pot. And I found myself tapping a second pot and a third pot. And then I found myself stopping when I know that nobody's watching, kind of like singing in the shower. And I find myself trying to fantasize a little bit that I'm Bob Marley on the pots. And it dawned on me that the one thing that I didn't experience at Glad McBean was the sounds the sounds of the factory. It wasn't your bustling factory like as you know it. You go into the kiln area, you hear the, the wash of a flame. You hear an occasional forklift. That's about it, you know? And so I thought there's a circle here. There's a circle of history, heritage, uh, reverence to what they're doing. And I just wanted to apply some sound to it. I called Steve one afternoon and within 20 minutes he was over, Steve from Pablo Cruz. And uh, I said, Steve, would you just take a moment and tap on these pots for me? And he started playing. And it doesn't take Steve long just to close his eyes and start hearing what he's doing and get into a rhythm. And he started creating some stuff. And then I asked him, now, now, now make the rain fall. And he made the rain fall. Now take me to Africa, and he took me to Africa. All these things that we did with these pots. So these are not pots, these are heirlooms. This is something that you're creating that's gonna be part of your family history for, for decades to come, hopefully. I can only imagine that a factory that's been there and still has a worldwide influence since 1875 will probably still have, an, this, pot, this pottery will still have an influence for, for decades to come with a family that owns it. I had not the foggiest notion what they wanted and I still don't know what they want. <laughs> Reportedly the oldest hydraulic elevator west of the Mississippi. That's what they say. Case. What's that? That'll work. My head hurts. <laughs> <laughs>